Welcome home. We are WNST, Tassel Baltimore and Baltimore Positive. It is a new year. It is a new tournament. Festivus for the rest of us is here. And uh, the Ravens have this rarefied air of just sitting around on Sunday. You know, I was so used to sitting around Sunday night back in the day watching Madden, Collinsworth, Al Michaels. Everyone's, Tell me the schedule. I need to know where the, or are we taking the bus to Buffalo? Are we taking the bus to New England? Are we taking a plane to New England? Where, who are we playing? When and where? What time and all that stuff? We're not playing this week. So we can just kind of sit around and watch Joe Flacco at 4.30 on Saturday afternoon. Luke Jones joins us now to discuss all things Ravens playoffs. There's no playoffs this weekend. It's just, this is kind of nice, Luke. We just sit at home and watch football all night Saturday, all day Sunday, even Monday night. And by the end, we'll figure out who we get to play next week, right? Yeah, I mean, we've narrowed it down a little bit now. We knew that they weren't going to play Kansas City. We know with the Bills having beaten Miami on Sunday night, they will not play Buffalo in the divisional round, but it could still be Houston. It could still be Joe Flacco and the Browns. It could be Miami. And yes, it could be the Pittsburgh Steelers after they beat the the JV on Saturday uh, in Baltimore and just miserable, miserable weather. But uh, it, it's nice, but it's also... Is that all you want to say about that game? Are we done talking about that game or no? I mean, we, <laughs> could, we could spend five minutes on it. I mean, but there, there just wasn't a whole lot to say. What, is Geno Stone okay? I mean, that might be the most pertinent thing that, that, that stems from that game uh, is, is some of the injuries that they had to some role players, which none, at least the initial indication from John Harbaugh, no, no, none of those appeared to be overly serious. But yeah, I mean, it's... It is nice for the Ravens, but at the same time, it is, I think, probably a little nerve wracking that you, can't, you haven't narrowed it down that much. OK, we know Jacksonville's out. What a collapse by them, by the way, losing five of their last six. And the only win they had was against Carolina, PU. Uh, but you, know, you still have so many possibilities about how this could go. Are you playing Saturday or Sunday? Who are you playing? Uh, you know, what's the matchup look like? But I think the good thing is, and we've, we've been saying this for a while as we as we've been pondering what teams could pose a potential threat to the Ravens. And, you know, we, we've been over that. And we'll continue to talk about that. But the Ravens are the most dangerous team. The Ravens are the team that everyone else is pointing to. In fact, I was seeing so much social media of you know, I follow some fans here and there of other teams. And everyone was saying, well, we can we can avoid Baltimore next round. So that that's a good thing. And, and I think that's really how we have to frame this entire conversation that, yeah, we'll talk about Buffalo or Kansas City's pedigree, Houston with C.J. Stroud. I mean, looking like he's going to be a stud quarterback in the AFC for the years in the years to come. Joe Flacco and the Browns we've talked about at length, but all of those teams are trying to avoid playing the Ravens as long as they can as well. You know, right now Buffalo and Kansas City saying, okay, we got we have to win our first round game, but if we do, we don't have to play Baltimore and in the divisional round. And that's a good thing. So I think that's where you're so excited. If you're talking about this from the Ravens perspective, that they are the number one seed, they have a chance now to, to rest up a little bit, although they're certainly going to work. They're going to practice this week, uh, even have a stadium practice on Saturday uh, as they, uh, you know, change things up a little bit from how they did things four years ago. But I mean, it comes down to this, all these that's other not gonna be for fans. Is it? No. No, 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 no. In fact, that pra that specific practice isn't even going to be open for media. I mean, it's probably more maybe a walkthrough at the stadium would be maybe the best way to describe it. So, uh, boy, they but, are bored, aren't they? They have a long well, time off, right? Well, I mean, you're just you're trying for football to players. It's a long time off. It is. It is. And, and the difference with this week compared to when they had their buy back in early December is, you know, the, the goal here isn't to get away from football now. Certainly, you like the benefit of some of your injured guys, your banged up guys healing up. You know, you want guys to be fresh. At the same time, you're putting in work. You know, th this isn't get away from football for five days. I mean, it's well, it is if you're going to Houston and watch your brother try to win a championship, take half the team with you, right? You know, well, uh, right. And that's, but that's Monday night, right? I mean, and they're back at it after that. So, so but this, you know, their their bye week a month ago. I mean, they. They got away. The players got off the entire week. So, yeah, that was a much different animal. But this is much more a case of what do we do to keep guys fresh but sharp? And, you know, that whole rest versus rust uh, debate that's been talked about at length and will continue to be talked about until they kick off uh, next weekend. So uh, it, it's, you know, this is a great opportunity for them. You know, they got through Saturday's game with, 
know, a few role players banged up, but, you know, Geno Stone kind of being the most notable of those, but it doesn't seem like it's anything overly serious. Uh, so you're, you're trying to get guys healthy. You're trying to stay sharp. As you know, as we talked in the postgame locker room, I had I had way less interest uh, hearing about the game, but uh, more so wanting to hear from Ronnie Stanley or Michael Pierce or some of these guys who were around four years ago as far as how do you approach this week differently? How do you take that disappointment from four years ago that Ronnie Stanley flat out said, look, because he was asked how long it took him to get over that. He said, I haven't gotten over that. I mean, that's part of this team's story, you know, the guys that are still here from 19, uh, that they live with that, right? That's something they carry. Do you remember when Harbaugh came with us that day in Indianapolis after the Joe Flacco, Lee Evans, Billy Cundiff game, this is up on YouTube. You can go watch the video of this. And he said, you never get over it. I'll never get over it. Do you, do you remember that? I, I, I do. I, I don't think I was in Indy, but I, I absolutely remember that, that conversation that you had. And it always I'm, feels like you've been with me. You've always been with me, Luke. It's like the shining. You know what I mean? Right, right. And, by the way, congratulations on being number 12 or 13, whatever number you were on the uh, on the countdown. Uh, I put some really fun pictures of old videos of you up of your tryouts because our 25th anniversary is here. And I'm trying to there were over a thousand people that sat in here and did what you did. And you're the 15 years later, you're the only one st- you, you're still in front of John Harbaugh. And I'm not, they freaked uh, me out. They let you in. So uh, they, they, at they, least they're... I, at least I've shed the uh, oversized Haloti, not a Jersey. Yeah, did, did, do you still have that or did, no, does that not? I'm sh- I still have it in my closet. Yeah. I mean, you give I, it to goodwill. Uh, you don't give away yeah, Raven stuff. Yeah. I, I typically, yeah, I hold on to that stuff and you know, I, whether I have kids of my own or you look my so, niece one day or whatever. So young, so young. So, I, I don't know. So it's kind of like looking at Lamar four years ago or looking at Joe Flacco play football back in the era when you were trying out with Haloti not his jersey on. We all age a little bit. But uh, Luke Jones is here. He is Luke at, uh, at, at Baltimore Positive. He'll be out in Owings Mills. Uh, we still have our tech service. We still have our social media. We still have all of that stuff rocking and rolling. The, the thing that I find most fascinating about this tournament is for – I don't know, three, four years now because Lamar hasn't played and he didn't even show up at the playoff game last year. We can go through all how how long a year is and how different we all feel about all of it and where they're seated and the money they spent, the other teams not wanting Lamar. I mean, all the national pundits are all over that. Everybody wet the bed. You know, anybody could have had him last year for a draft pick and paying him and nobody even called. Nobody picked the phone up. So all of that exists. But in regard to Lamar and in regard to the playoff run, as I saw it all of these years, I thought the, the last four years, let's say since they lost, the, let's say, Buffalo, the playoff losses. I thought, all right, you lost to Buffalo. You lost to Derrick Henry. Right. You, you, you've, you've lost these playoff games. At what point are you going to win three in a row and beat? And this is my you can go back and listen to me. The Lamar hater in me and all of that stuff. You have to go beat Joe Burrow, Josh Allen, and Patrick Mahomes probably on the road. Like we were thinking like in those terms because we don't win divisions around here much. We we did this year, but I don't have anything to compare this to. I, I don't remember sitting here and you're like, well, back in 19, they, yeah, back in 19 I forgot about because it, it ended quickly and abruptly. But I this period of time of waiting for this game, the thing that has struck me the most on this Monday morning as we – Honor the King. It is Elvis's birthday. So uh, uh, hope you all have a hunk of hunk of burning love here for his birthday. But they're not going to have to play Mahomes and Allen, period, right? They're only going to play one or the other. They can't play them both, right? So they can't play Burrow. The, the kid from the Chargers who has all the commercials, he's not coming in. So, oh, they don't have to go on the road. We don't have to sell a road trip. We don't have to go to New England, Pittsburgh, Buffalo, Cleveland. They don't have to go anywhere. This is a different gig. Like, as I set it up in my mind, if you were to say to me, well, they're going to be 15 and two or 14 and three or 13 and four after giving a game away. And they're going to be the one seed. And Burroughs, the reason they're going to be the one seed is Burroughs hurt. Herbert's hurt. Half the league's hurt. The other half's no good. Trevor Lawrence stinks. His team stinks. He's hurt. So they didn't make it. You don't have to beat him. So who are you, who are you going to have to beat in this tournament? Who does Lamar pitching matchups? Who is Lamar going to have to beat? He's going to have to beat three teams now, not four, all at home, 
Vegas will be different. Once they get to the Super Bowl, they lose that game. I guess nobody here is going to be mad. Uh, you know what I mean? If they get to the Super Bowl and they lose, all right, we had a nice year. It sucks. We'll feel bad about it. But they made the Super Bowl. They take a facer next Saturday or next Sunday. It's awful. They lose the championship game at home. Ah, uh, man, I've been at some of those. That's awful. When you lose in front of your home, in front of your home fans, the only chance since 1971. If they lose that game, devastating. If they get to the Super Bowl, you get to go out to Las Las Vegas and run around a little bit and ask questions on my behalf, of course. Um, I, I I think we can all be happy. But the way this thing is set up now. You talk about 19, like, hey, Nash, you forgot about 19, how great it was, how great they were, how great the setup was and all. All I remember is we got steamrolled, and my wife was in in the hospital at 2 o'clock in the morning at the minute after that happened and with COVID, and it was just an ugly, awful couple of weeks, uh, as I remember getting ready for the Super Bowl. These two weeks in waiting for this, this is where the anticipation builds. This is where everybody gets excited and visions of sugar plums and they get their Vegas plans together and all of that. This is the best path they've ever had that they could ever have because they don't have to see two of the top quarterbacks. They only have to see one of them. And and, and Allen, for all he did run it around the other night, I, I mean – they're a dangerous team, and you've been saying that for a month with Buffalo after they took their little nap back in October and November. But they have done themselves a great, great service um, in getting to a Super Bowl by maybe just getting Joe Flacco next week or just getting Mason Rudolph. Or I mean, I, I don't know how Kansas City or Buffalo are going to get upset at home. I'm, I'm playing through that. At some point, one of those teams is coming here for the championship game if you can get through Flacco or whoever it's going to be. But – this is a softer tournament from my eyes than anything I thought we were going to get into once Lamar got us. I was convinced they were making the playoffs. I don't think Lamar sucks. I just think Lamar's going to have a hard time beating three quarterbacks on the road without this defense. We didn't know this defense was coming, right? So looking at it as you look at it the last four years, this is like a dream scenario for the Ravens to make the Super Bowl. And they're healthy. Yeah, I mean. We've been saying this for a while. I mean, the setup for this, I mean, let's be clear. When you have a franchise quarterback like Lamar Jackson or Patrick Mahomes in Kansas City, obvi- and, and he's the standard, right? I mean, post Tom Brady, Patrick Mahomes instantly became the standard because he's won two of these already. Uh, Josh Allen, you know, go through the list. Joe Burrow, who's taken the Bengals to a Super Bowl. If you have one of those quarterbacks, if they're healthy, you have a chance every year. Now, you're still going to have the ebbs and flows of, Okay, what's your salary cap picture? What's your injury situation uh, to your point? So you have some years that look better on paper than others. You have some years that look like, hey, this is a golden opportunity. And how can you not look at this year for the Baltimore Ravens with everything that's transpired with let and let's be clear, this is a heck of a football team. I mean, this is a a special football team. You know, the the Aaron Schatzes of the world, you know, the analytics and looking at DBOA and uh, all those different metrics beyond just the win loss point differential things like that they They all unprecedented things they all say that this is one of the great one of the absolute greatest regular season teams of the last 40 years and by the way 2019 wasn't quite as high on that list but was also on that list as well and that's why it hurt four years ago give your stat from sunday you tweeted out a stat in the fourth quarter when they fell behind (laughs) that you haven't tweeted out all year go ahead go Game 17. Go ahead. Give him this stat. This is crazy. It took until, what, the final four minutes of week 18 for the Ravens to trail by two scores. First time all season. And mind you, no Lamar. No, I mean, go through the list of guys who didn't play on on Saturday. Roquan and Zay Flowers and Kevin Zeitler. You know, we know they rested about eight or nine of their starters. Kyle Hamilton and Marlon Humphrey. Yeah, exactly. So, so you're talking they, about literally their best players were literally their six best players weren't playing. Literally. Uh, pretty much, yeah. I mean, you know, there were, couple, there were some good players on the field, important players on the field. Well, but Mark Andrews out, isn't out there either, but go ahead. Yeah, I mean, right? Sure, sure. Well, I mean, but he's been hurt. I mean, he's been hurt since, what, before Thanksgiving? I'm just talking about it's against their salary cap. I'm talking about at the end of the year, their oh, best players, they weren't playing with them, and they finally started losing a little bit. Yeah, they and they fell behind by 10. I mean, think, of, think how easily... Teams fall behind by 10. Good teams, mind you. You know, good teams falling behind by 10. It doesn't take much. You know, you give up a, a big play, pass interference, something like that. Give up a touchdown on your opening drive. You go three and out. The opponent drives 
40 yards and kicks a field goal. You're down 10 nothing. seven minutes into the game. How often do we see that happen in the NFL? It happens all the time, even, even the best teams. So for the Ravens to go all year, that doesn't guarantee anything, mind you, but it speaks to the level of dominance. It's the same as that factoid until Saturday. They had led in, at some point inside the two-minute warning in every game uh, this season. Well, if they right? win these so, three games and win the Super Bowl, we'll look at all that and say, man, what what team is that? I mean, I don't even – the Patriots were, were undefeated 12 right. years ago, whatever it was or whatever. So, I mean, that's a different regular season thing. But um, And the Miami Dolphins, of course, Mercury Morris have something to say about that. But it'll never happen again. I mean, you know, that you go 17 weeks without falling behind. I mean, like, that's crazy. I mean, it's wild, right? I mean, 17 weeks without falling behind <laughs> by two scores. You know? So it's incredibly impressive. But and here's something that I, I want to throw out there, because so much has been talked about with resting starters, the rest versus rust debate, what happened in 2019. You know, they rested their starters in the last game against the Steelers that year. I'll throw something else out there. And, and, and again, these, this whole thing is so it's impossible to quantify, right? We have examples of teams that rested and then they made a Super Bowl run. We have examples of teams that played their starters. We have examples of teams that played starters and got hurt. Uh, someone hurt in, in the last game of the season. I famously think of what the Patriots with Wes Welker uh, before the Ravens went up there and, and Ray Rice ran on, on the first play of the game, a, a touchdown. Uh, but so you have all those different examples, but I'll give you another one while we're on that subject, because, hey, we have this open week. We don't know who they're going to play yet. I I had a theory at the time, and I had almost forgotten about this until I was watching Saturday's game, because the Ravens took a very similar approach against the Steelers four years ago, you know, in, in that 2019 finale in week 17, where RG3 was running around uh, in place of Lamar. And the the Steelers had a chance to to make the playoffs going into that, that Sunday. Now, I don't think what they needed to happen, I think it was something to do with the Chargers or something like that. Whatever happened, I don't think it happened anyway, but the Ravens beat them with their backups, and they beat them pretty handily uh, if you go back and look at the final score. I thought at the time, you know, in hindsight, I wonder if that was detrimental to them where not only did they have the long layoff, but they beat their rival with their backups, and I think there's something to be said. And again, it's all theory. It's all conjecture. Who knows, right? I mean, it still comes down to it that the Ravens just didn't play well in that game. They turned the ball over. They couldn't stop the run, yada, 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 right? I mean, there's so many different things that went wrong in that game. But they fell behind 10 nothing. Part of me wonders. <laughs> right, sure, exactly. But you look at the you look at the mojo of where this team has been, how dominant they've been down the stretch with this schedule. Part of me do wonders, and, and again, impossible to know, impossible to quantify. It, it, you know, just throwing it out there. Part of me wonders if beating the Steelers four years ago in that last game where it was backups, if that messed with their head a little bit in a negative way in the sense of saying, man, we didn't even play Lamar. We didn't even play Marshall Yonda. We didn't even play Earl Thomas or Brandon Williams or Mark Andrews or Mark Ingram. We still beat those guys. We're invincible. Now, who knows? Did they think that? I have oh, no idea, I was in that but... locker room. I had a press pass back then, Lucas, way right. back then. They felt pretty invincible. I mean, so, I, I, I think there was a an absolute – state of shock in that locker room at that night. Like they didn't think they could lose like this. And when you don't lose, you're like the Harlem Globetrotters and the Washington generals, right? Like right. when you don't lose, you don't even know how to lose. And you know, sure. all these Alabama guys go through that. Right. Um, and I, I, the invincible part for sure. I, I, I would, I go along with invincible when you're going out to LA and beating them 60 to yeah. three, when you're do when you're winning like that, you do feel like, and and again, and I spoke to this with Lamar, being young, pounding the ground, all of that that went on five years ago, that when things got bad, they didn't have a plan to make things good. It, it was very chaotic if you go back and watch that game about running left, running right. They didn't have the kind of offense they had now. They didn't have the kind of players and the kind of weapons that they have now. I would go so far, and we'll – We'll scrimmage this between now and Saturday because what the hell else are we going to do besides watch Joe Flacco play in the playoffs on Saturday? I could do my Ronnie if I wanted to. I wouldn't be nearly as racist as Ronnie, but it would be fun. Um, I would say for them, if they fell behind 10 to nothing, they'd have a better countenance. Lamar would have a better countenance. They have a better offense. They have better. They have more they can do besides, well, Lamar, Lamar better run. That's still our best play. 
I haven't said that in six or seven weeks, that Lamar running still their best play. It's still their best play. They haven't used it a whole lot. They don't want them to use it a whole lot. So, like Josh Allen. Did you see what he did late in the mm-hmm. game Sunday night? I mean, he's 15 yards from the sticks, and he takes off like a gazelle, and he makes it with three yards. I mean, there were three tacklers that could have had him, and he makes the first down. I, the feeling I have with Lamar is Lamar is a lot better than he was four years ago, and that's not a knock on Nestor's radio show four years ago. That's a that's a tribute to a young quarterback that has, as we said in the beginning, he's only gotten better. You know, he's gotten better at every step. He now needs to take getting better out with better players next weekend and prove it to the world, right? I mean, this is the believe that moment. Here we are, and it's never going to be better than this. They're never going to have a better path to the Super Bowl than they have. Week off, pretty good health, only have to see one of the two, you know, serious quarter. Not that Joe Flacco is not serious, not that Mason, but – not that CJ Stroud's not serious, right? Uh, if, I was if just that were to say, happen, right. If that were to happen, right? And I and we'll evaluate, we'll do that in another segment, look at these games, but they're equipped better to be down 10 to nothing. They're equipped better to have something catastrophic happen, that Lamar throws a pick six to start the game, which is possible. Ball pops up, anything, it's, the ball moves. They can recover. They could come back from being down 17 to six at halftime. They, they could do that. And no problem. I, I believe that. And I don't know that I believe that in 2019. And to your point, that invincibility didn't serve them well. Well, and, and the point I was trying to make, you know, and look, everything you just said, I, you know, I had no problem with any of that. But I do wonder if losing this game on Saturday, and again, it didn't mean anything, right? I mean, people can, I, I know some people talked about the run defense. We've been talking about the run defense from a relative standpoint, it's not an, a weakness in the way that you look at weaknesses of other teams when they, they, there's something they're really bad at. But relative to other areas, their run defense has been a little leaky, you know, compared to where you'd like it to be. Uh, it's not bad, but it's not elite like their pass defense, for example, or how their pass rush has been. Uh, so that happens. Yeah, they clearly didn't generate much offense. I mean, the, the conditions were miserable, but I think there's a, a valuable lesson there that or maybe not a a lesson as much as a reminder that hey okay lamar didn't play these other starters didn't play that's great we lost the football game and here's a reminder guys unlike 2019 where they hadn't lost since what early october they won their last 12 games that year i think saturday could serve a purpose of hey you know we didn't play our best football we put the ball on the ground and you know, the, the defense wasn't great at stopping the run. We gave up the big, you know, the long touchdown. It's a reminder of how fleeting this can be now moving forward. We can't have a game like that. You know, we can't have a bad day. Now, whether you're the number one seed or the, you're the number seven seed, everyone's in the same boat from the standpoint of when you're out there playing, you're a loss away from going home, period, no matter how good you were uh, during the regular season. So, so I think, you know, that's just something that came to mind in a game that, Let's face it, there wasn't a whole lot of, of meaning to take away from that. So I, I just thought maybe there's something to be said about just dropping a meaningless game at the end that's just a reminder of, hey, no matter how great this looks, to your point, you know, Patrick Mahomes and Josh Allen are the two major pedigree quarterbacks left, and more so Mahomes and Allen. I mean, Allen hasn't won – the Bills haven't won anything. You know, they've won some playoff games, but they haven't gotten to, to the pinnacle. Uh, but it is a reminder of, yeah – you are the number one seed and you've got this great path and it is set up, set up for you. It's all sitting right there for you. Win two games and you're playing in the Super Bowl, two home games and you're playing in the Super Bowl. But, you know, if you don't play your best and you turn the ball over or, you know, you make some mistakes early on, you come out slow uh, in the divisional round or the AFC championship game, if, if assuming you advance, then you know, this can, this can go sideways really quickly. But I agree with your, your point. And this is absolutely where I think this team has grown Lamar and just the offense in its entirety. I I think, you know, you would certainly hope with the experiences of the last four years, you know, kind of beginning with that 2019 game. And I I know they lost a playoff game the year before when Lamar was a rookie, but you know, that was kind of the house money year at that point. Right. I mean, no one really thought they were going to go to the Super Bowl with Lamar, you know, that as a rookie in the offense, transforming the they way thought it joe is, but... was going to come off the bench and and save the no, day right no no that wasn't that wasn't happening either but 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 the point is 2019 was the first full year 
of the Lamar Jackson experience. And yeah, they've, they've had a lot of success in the regular season and a lot of disappointment in January. So I think all of that being said, sitting right there, it's Saturday's loss, whatever. But I think there was a reminder that, that, that is just thrown in there to say, hey, you know, you got to go out there and play mistake free football. You need to go out there and, and start fast and be the team you're capable of being. If they if they are, they shouldn't have too much of an issue, at least in this divisional round. You know, whether you're talking about C.J. Stroud, who, by the way, he's coming. The, the Texans are going to be they're going to be an issue uh, moving forward, I think, because I think he's that good. Uh, but you know, you have Joe Flacco and the Browns, Miami, who I said to you even before week 17, I'm not a believer in, they can't play 60 minutes, but we'll see what happens as they go to Kansas city. And if Pittsburgh, you know, finds a way and Buffalo reverts to what Buffalo, frankly, what Buffalo was earlier in the game on Sunday night, I guess the Steelers have some semblance of a prayer, but the point is those four teams I just mentioned. The Ravens are the clear favorite against any of those four opponents coming in here uh, in two weeks. So better take care of business. But it starts this week. Practice, preparation, keeping your body right, guys getting healthy that are banged up, and being ready to start fast when they kick it off uh, divisional round weekend. So lots going to happen between now and then in terms of who they're going to play. But, yeah, it's sitting right there. Go back to what Brian Billick said 20 plus years ago, men. It's time to go to a Super Bowl. Here's Luke Jones. Uh, we're, I'd have to go back and figure out who we lost to in 19. You're like, they won 12 games. And I'm like, who do we lose to in 19? We're pretty good, man. Uh, they're pretty good this year as well as all the stats stood out. We're going to be giving away um, Maryland Lottery scratch-offs, our friends at Window Nation, our friends at Jiffy Lube, all of our sponsors, Wise Markets, Royal Farms. We are doing the grandest radio, re- radio row week in the history of WNST, and that's saying something because we've been doing this a long, long time. My first Super Bowl radio row was in 1992 in Minneapolis. Um, so, uh, it's uh, been 31 years, 32 years, really, since our first, uh, radio row. Uh, we're going to be doing the grandest radio row in the history of radio rows. It's going to be so great. We're not even going to call it radio row. We're going to call it crab cake row. So stay tuned. He's Luke. I'm Nestor. We'll come back. Continue on. We'll, uh, we'll talk about Joe Flacco and CJ Stroud, that young guy and all that football we're going to watch this weekend. Um, we got a weekend off on the couch. We are delighted about it. We're going to be here all week talking football, 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 wall to wall, um, and getting ready for things. And um, it's a big month around here. Get out your purple Festivus gear. It's time to win a Super Bowl. We're WNSD AM 1570. Towson, Baltimore. We never stop talking Baltimore. Positive.